Here we are in the parlor room of the beautiful, historic Schmidt House with famed local historian <laughs> Don Trosper. Don, how are you doing? Oh, doing pretty well. Good to talk with you here today. <laughs> and uh, this is a, a great place with a lot of history of Tumwater. And we're talking about your new book, The Tumwater We Never Knew. You can get it in bookstores now. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But yeah. first, just tell me a little bit about this room right here. Well, this was the formal room. Uh, uh, Clara Schmidt of the second generation that lived here. Uh, she was a uh, classical music fan. And she liked to even once in a while bring down the Seattle Symphony to Olympia. Pay, paying out of her own pocket to do wow. that. Wow. But uh, here she hosted, oh, every two months, a musical with somebody singing out in that room and then two pianos in here, great baby grand pianos. And they'd borrow four, 140 chairs, folding chairs from the mortuary downtown Olympia. And she said, if, if you let us do that for free, we'll trade out. And when I die, you'll get my business. And it, it hey, worked hey, out. It that's worked a good out. deal there. <laughs> this house, the Schmidt house, has such a history not only with Tumwater, uh, with Olympia, with Olympia beer, but just uh, as a, well, I mean, this is kind of where everything ended too with the Oregon Trail. I well, mean, yeah, the Cowlitz, yeah, the Cowlitz Trail is an extension of the Oregon Trail. It's just amazing to think yeah. that we are here in Tumwater, once known as New Market, uh -huh. and the stories that you have had to have found have just got to be great. It, yeah. Tell me a little bit about your history. I know Trosper, there's a Trosper Road. Yeah, yeah, we had this name from my great grandpa, 1892 we got here. And we're related by marriage to one of the Simmons Bush party. Jesse Ferguson was a young single guy and he was our uncle, uncle, uncle Jesse to us. And so they, uh, 1892, came from Kansas because Uncle Jesse said, come on up, I'm trying to sell off all this half section that I inherited when I first came. And so we, we bought 60 acres of his property on ordering Trosper Road, uh -huh. and then um, we still have 25 acres left of the original that we live on still, and surrounded by city limits now. We used to be in the country. And then talk to me just about how your family has grown. Is there still a lot of roots here in Tumwater? Yeah, we, uh, all of our, well, uh, the, we have about four generations of us on the homestead property that live there. And our kids and grandkids are still in town, and so we don't have to travel anywhere to see the grandkids. That's great. <laughs> Cross country and all that. Do you so, think do you think because of your history and the history with the founding of this area that's kind of compelled you to be the local historian to kind of understand it what became was... a hobby of mine because that's and especially the older you get the more interested you get and, uh -huh. and I didn't find any books really specifically about Tumwater Tumwater is mentioned in a few things but I thought well there's a nice retirement project or sure. hobby project sure. is to trace Tumwater's beginnings. And so I did that and it really caught me. And, I, and of course, with a family connection, people say, Trosper Road, you lived here all your life. And I say, not yet. Yes, yes. <laughs> when you go and try to search for these original documents, perhaps, or the first storyteller of mm -hmm. one of these stories, how do you go about doing it these days? Well, the internet makes it faster. You used to have to go to the state library and go through microfiche files and uh -huh. really take forever to go through that. But now with the genealogy bank and some of these online things to find old newspapers, it makes it a lot faster, a lot easier. And they have it cataloged. You just log in a name that you might have heard of Tumwater history and then it starts bringing up all these uh, old newspaper articles that, that, that covered that. So that helps a lot. And then just finding Diaries or journals are just like finding treasure when you find one of those. I bet. And uh, so you're looking for the as, as close as you can to the original uh, source, and multiple sourcing is what you really need. In addition to the Olympia Tumwater Foundation, you do a lot of work with the schools around, different businesses that are looking to tie in great historical notes around the community. Uh, we were talking before we started about some of the great uh, past in Tumwater school history with the Homesteaders program, that really bringing to life yep. how that started. Talk to me about <laughs> New Market to Tumwater and how that transition <laughs> came about. Well, uh, Michael T. Simmons, when he came here, we, he was attracted by the waterfalls and the, of the Deschutes River. And that water power was his vision of a new market for an industry, grain, uh, you know, grist mills and sawmills and things like that. And so he named it that, and he named it New Market. But the other settlers that came in off the Cowlitz Trail, or Oregon Trail, uh, didn't like that name so much. And so they started to use the uh, Indian, the trading language, Chinook language, uh, name of Tumchuk, which means noisy water, uh, <laughs> roughly. 
And so they took that and Americanized it, and Tumwater was the name they used, and that became, it just dropped the other one. <laughs> what, we, what we came to know. Yeah, yeah. When you look at some of the major inflection points on the growth of this area, obviously in the, what, 1890s when Leopold Schmidt yeah, came to yeah. town, we're in the Schmidt house here, and that yeah. was the founder of the Olympia Brewing Company, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that was a huge thing in the 50s then too, bringing uh, the interstate through Olympia really changed the landscape as well. Sure did. What are some of the other lesser known inflection points in Tumwater's history that you found with the book? Well, really when I talk to groups that uh, many people don't even realize how deep of a history we have and how significant Tumwater is in our state's history. We're two main points. One is the Simmons Bush Party. We're the first permanent American community north of the Columbia in what had been the British controlled site of Columbia River with the Hudson Bay Company. So we're the first and and then the other point, well, and part of that is that it's because of racism in the American side in Oregon forced the Simmons Bush party to come north because the Bush family was a mixed race. Yeah. And so they earned their keep with Dr. McLaughlin down at Fort Vancouver, splitting cedar shakes that first winter and strong work ethic and good character. And McLaughlin said, well, we're kind of losing the competition with the Americans. They're bringing all the settlers. And so maybe this is pick and choose who we want to come north. And and the Simmons Bush Party, they were obviously good character, and so yeah. they let them come and explore. So it was because of one of the reasons of, of, of our founding as a state is racism in Oregon. Wow, isn't <laughs> Here, that They were something? trying to escape that in Missouri when they came out of the Oregon sure. tra Trail. Sure. But the second thing that makes it significant is what you mentioned, the Olympia Brewing Company, and Tumwater was 50 years old by the time the Schmitz arrived in 1896. And uh, they just fell in love with this place. Uh, you can see it was Leopold who was in the background here. Leopold and Joanna, he had a good operation, brewing operation in Butte, Montana, the Centennial Brewing Company. He'd been there 20 years, got involved in their government and everything. In fact, it was a Montana state legislature that had a fact-finding mission that he got tabbed for to come okay. out and see what the other states in the Northwest were, were doing with sure. their new capitals, because they wanted to build their capital too. So they went to Salem and they went to uh, California and, and up here to Olympia, and boy, they, uh, so of course, Leopold had a sailor's background, a maritime background, and he just fell in love with the salt water meeting the fresh water of the Deschutes. Mm -hmm. So the southern tip of Puget Sound was right at that lower falls. That's before it became a lake in later years. But yeah, uh, so they they loved that and uh, and the greenery. Butte, Montana, was a mining town and polluted, and they didn't want to raise kids there. <laughs> so that this sound looked really good with all the richness of the land. But then that what really topped it off is you found out that this whole valley, this whole area was uh, artesian well water. Sure. You know, really pure stuff, real good, good water. You don't have to treat it to do anything with it. So uh, when he discovered that, that's, that sold him. He, he, he and his brother and the family decided to sell everything, lock, stock, and beer barrel and butte, uh -huh. and come on out to Tumwater and start the brewery down below. Man, what so, an amazing story. Yeah, yeah. And they became, well, because he was so convinced of the, value of high quality ingredients and the good water and the sanitary conditions every step of the process and the highest wages to the employees. And he, he just did everything right. And the quality of that beer was so good that they became the, the hot item, I guess yeah. you'd say, in the, not only the Pacific Northwest, but all around the Pacific Rim. They were the biggest brand sold in Hawaii. And they were the largest one up in uh, the Yukon for the gold rush. And uh, oh. Siberia and Japan and all these different places along the Pacific Rim, they're that's buying a, Olympia That's beer. amazing. And this was when? In the early 1900s? Then? 1896 through World War I. Sure. And they just, they couldn't keep up to the demand. They were always building new buildings to try to increase their capacity down there. And then when Prohibition hit, they shut, got shut down. Sure. <laughs> and so by then, Leopold had passed away and his son, Peter G. Schmidt, and his brothers started to run it. And they had to deal with prohibition, and they'd already invested in other areas of business like uh, hotels. In fact, the hotel chain, Weston Hotel chain, is an offshoot of what the Schmidt started back in the Depression days. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So there's a lot of rich history with the Olympia Brewing Company, and they're so community-minded, too. They, they would uh, help out all the different cities with different projects. When they formed the foundation that I'm a part of, Olympia Tumwater Foundation, Back in 1950, they were, their first project was building and donating the Tivoli Fountain to the state capitol grounds. Wow. And then from then on, they just kept going with 501c3 status finally. 
but they'd already been the, kind of the Tumwater's fire department unofficially because their employees were the firemen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was just, uh, just so, and, and that tradition of uh, public service, that desire to contribute to their community stayed throughout their generations as long as they were in business. So it was quite a shock to everybody when after, after they were a top 10 brewery in the nation in the 1960s and 70s, and the big guys started gobbling up the medium-sized guys, you know, sure. that kind of thing. So eventually, Pabst had a kind of forced merger with Olympia, and then Miller and all these other biggies came through. Miller was the one that shut it down in 2003. Yeah. And, uh, and that last whistle blew, and that was a shock to our whole attitude. <laughs> I remember I was in broadcast school at Bates on that last day and I came down yeah. and somewhere I have uh, on mini disc a tape of that final bell whistle. Yeah, we had that too. Somewhere. Yeah, 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 that's a good one. And they still try to blow that whistle like at the 4th of July sure. celebrations, but it's not quite the power that the yeah. brewery had. Yeah. So it doesn't sound quite the same, but it sounds good. So. Continuing on now, let's move on to the book, 40 Short Stories of Historic Tumwater, Washington, from 1845 to 2021. The Tumwater We Never Knew, Don <laughs> Trosper, Public History Manager of the Olympia Tumwater Foundation, subtitled, For People Who Love History But Don't Realize It Yet. Yes. <laughs> that's one thing that's bugged me for a long time is that people always say that history was my least favorite uh, subject in sure. school. Because, and I understand because it was usually taught in a dry, dull way with just names and dates, names memorize and dates, that, I remember and that. answer the questions at the end of the chapter, and mm -hmm. that was it. So mm -hmm. Maybe a coach was teaching it or something. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't the motivation. So I was really happy to see the Tumwater Middle School Homesteaders program sure. get created and, and the hands on history. But what really makes history come alive is making it local, which all the big textbook dealers, I suppose, don't do that. They, they just have. Well, uh, when you localize it, all of a sudden you might know the people, you know the locations, yeah. you, and you start telling their stories, and uh, it comes alive. Well, and like you, you did with Homesteaders. I so had a great time. Was great. Mr. Yeah. Bunton was my teacher at Tumwater Middle School, and that was... And and that was the cl that was the class to to, to get into. Yeah, I think yeah. we had to apply to mm -hmm, it and everything. Mm -hmm. And yep. we spent a, a very long time learning about detailed history of the city of Tumwater. We would dress up in period clothes and be a part of the apple cider presses and uh -huh, the parades. Uh -huh. And it really did bring a, a good sense of community. I mean, yep, you yep. felt the bones of Tumwater as you were yep, doing those yep. projects. Yep. So were you involved when they did the uh, stagecoach reenactments those two years? No, oh, I didn't see that those. That was a good one, too. Oh got involved in that, too. <laughs> some of these 40 short stories, tell me about some of the ones that you kind of already had an idea about, but <laughs> found more detail, or some that some guy or gal may have stopped you and said, did you ever hear the story of this? <laughs> There's a lot of that, and I still get that. In fact, I hope this inspires a lot more of those kind sure. of stories so I can write some more future stories. But um, the, the, the fish ladders is one thing that I thought everybody used to think that was finished in the 1950s. So there must have been a recent project. But I found out that the, the first fish ladder that was at the lower falls that brought the salmon up above that, was uh, started 1890s, and I thought, whoa. And so I went back in, into the old newspapers and found all the articles and, that I could find about it. And I loved uh, John Miller Murphy of the Washington Standard. He, he made a description of the fish ladder system that's still in use today, by the way. And uh, he said uh, in the Washington Standard in 1898, I guess it was, he said that uh, good progress is being made on the construction of the Tumwater fish ladder and the scaly denizens of the sound waters will soon be able to go upstairs to make their toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I love that phrase. <laughs> yes. Very visual. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. But it only went up to the middle falls. The middle of the river didn't go, didn't go all the way up to the top like it is now. But at least they started it, and they've, there wasn't a salmon run there because the falls were too tall. Yeah. So, so who would have put that project on? Well, it was the uh, Department of Fisheries. In fact, uh, the salmon canning industry was really big at the turn of the century up in Alaska and along the Columbia. Uh -huh. And Puget Sound too, but the Puget Sound run was not as good. I think maybe industrialization and sawmills and things like that might have slowed it down. And so they uh, wanted to find decent rivers coming into the sound that could be rejuvenated and made into a salmon run. And the Deschutes didn't have a salmon run, so hey, this is a good way to start. And yeah. so, so that, I think that's what inspired it. That's amazing. The economic things. 
that is a long time ago. So in the 50s then, with the salmon ladders that are, you can see now and walk over, mm -hmm. is, was that part of the interstate project? Was this a it was CCC before, project or how did? The Department of Fisheries and I think. Just an upgrade. Yeah, it was, in fact it was a, yeah, they, they were trying to get it run so they could start the fingerlings way upstream and let them down that way, but they needed to have a completed fish ladder system to uh -huh. do that. Uh -huh. So it was about you know, mid-50s. In fact, that old uh, fish or salmon facility there had to be replaced. It was 50 years old and way out of date and for modern technology and, and accepted practice. And so we during this COVID shutdown, we shut down the park and, and fisheries were ready to renovate that and they put a brand new facility in there it's a regular hatchery now with fish viewing windows you can yep. see them underwater and, yeah, we were and right now in october that's the peak of the salmon yeah run, so we were there are, over the weekend yeah, yeah it is it it looks so cool i mean before you could look down and and see some yeah, fish yeah. here and there mm -hmm. but now with you kind of the window to them right at your eye level yeah it yeah. just adds so then tell me another story, one that you, you didn't quite know about or you were very surprised to find out. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just, there's a lot of them I can't pick and choose too easily. But I, I, Hewitt Drugstore was uh, right at the end of the Boston Street Bridge where the freeway now is, where, where you cross the lower bridge and hit kind of a T there for uh -huh. Deschutes Parkway. Yep. Well, right across, that was the main Tumwater commercial section of businesses. And the Hewitt Drugstore was right across where the freeway now is, and they were the post office also. They were kind of the center point of, uh, of Tumwater that, because everybody came to get their mail and get their prescriptions filled and had a little soda fountain in there and that kind of thing. So they're just a, a real draw. And, uh, so, and I knew about the Hewitts, Charles and Eva, but I found out, and, and the city of Tumwater jumped on it too when they found out that Eva Hewitt and Charles both were in that post office, but when they were required to take the exam for the uh, to become more official, uh, they both had to take a test, and only Eva passed it. Oh, no. <laughs> and she became the pa first female postmaster at Tumwater. Isn't that something? So we've named the current post office for her. I mean, uh -huh. it's, it's, it's now official. It took an act of Congress to do that. So uh, that was kind of neat. But uh, Charles, the husband, was still a very important uh, leader of Tumwater, and, and his dad was pretty famous, too. He was a s state supreme court justice or, uh, or territorial, I guess. But uh, <laughs> I came across an article that was where C.C. Hewitt was the dad and his son Charles accidentally shot him. He said, uh, Judge Hewitt was accidentally shot by his son last night. His son, while in the act of shooting a skunk, shot his father in the knee. <laughs> the doctors decided it would be dangerous to probe for that shot and so left it in his leg. He's now resting away. <laughs> arresting easy I said but both and they were both highly respected and they, I'm sure that if there was a national choir around they would have made sure. that a big headline uh -huh. father shoot son shooting a skunk uh -huh. <laughs> but those kind of stories I just love to pick up on those kind of things what about some uh, <laughs> characters in Tumwater's history that have gone beyond Tumwater's borders or beyond Washington state borders <laughs> Obviously, the Crosby house. Yeah, the Crosbys. Uh, Bing Crosby wasn't born there. He was right. born in Tacoma, but his, his grandparents mm -hmm. built that. And they were started by Crosby ship, cap ship captains. Yeah. And so they uh, uh, built the house. And that's one of the oldest houses in the area, along with the Methodist Church on 2nd Avenue, or used to be the Methodist okay. Church. That building's just about as old, about the same era. Um, so, yeah, the Crosbys, and then, of course, Bing must have visited his grandparents sure. once or twice. <laughs> always, yeah, always visit your grandparents. Yeah, before going off to Gonzaga, you could spoke in to mm -hmm. go to college or something. So, yeah, we, and then um, the Schmitz, of course, they brought in movie stars and people of renown and yeah. musicians to, to visit and do uh, celebrations for the brewery and so on. They had Bob Hope and Jerry Lewis, and Helen Keller came and toured the, toured the place. Really? <laughs> There's all kinds of names. And... Uh, uh, it was just, uh, well, one thing they had, uh, the, the Olympia Brewery sponsored these PGA golf tournaments along the coast, you know, Pebble Beach and uh -huh. down in San Diego and so on. And at one of those, uh, they had a beer tent or a beer garden, what do you call it? Anyway, they were beer tasting. And this young, unknown actor was walking by, kind of tall, lanky young kid, and, and they kind of took him under their wing and said, come on in, have, have some Olympia, and just treated him nicely and encouraged him. And uh, it ended up being Clint Eastwood. 
And in later years, when he had movies that weren't westerns, sure, uh, he put product placement, Olympia Beer, in all his movies, like Play Misty for Me and Every Which Way But Loose. So I've seen pictures uh, of of those still shots too, and I'm yeah. reminded of yeah. the Blues Brothers yes. movie. They uh, use Olympia Beer in those in, in American that, Graffiti. American yeah. Graffiti, and that is another way. And it's amazing for folks to then be able to tie that in and go, yep. Yeah, Olympia. advertising. Yeah, yeah, it was made really good advertising for the company. So what what do you think as you look to the past of Tumwater and you see the future unfold in front of you here? There are just so many great possibilities yeah. that I look at. I see yeah. the partnership with Heritage Distillery and South Puget Sound yeah. uh, there and some of the other things that are going on around here. To me, the highlight of the whole Tumwater uh, history is the character traits. And that was, they didn't let things negative take them down. They were always of the positive side and, and make it turn out right and, and press on and, and make a success. You know, the Schmitz did that with the hotels during Prohibition. And, yeah. And uh, we just, every, every generation had that attitude that was passed down from the founders. Generosity and, and just all the good character traits you would want and, and community minded and uh, so. That turning neg negatives into positives is something we as a town have inherited. Yeah. Maybe not even realizing it, but yet we do. And so that to me is a, a real key for, for Tumwater's nature and, and character. What about the foundation? What are, what are you looking ahead to the next 10 years, next couple projects yeah. that you've got? Maybe another book in the works? Well, yeah, we've, we, I, I have enough material to do another one of these uh, and it won't repeat any of these stories. Uh -huh. So that's... That could be in the works, but it's not set yet. But depends on the success of the sale. Yeah, and for and sure. Fundraising for this, because that the funds raised from this book will go towards the history program of the foundation. Uh, the foundation gets involved in uh, scholarships, high school scholarships for the largest uh, scholarship group in Thurston County. I think we've gone over now the two million dollar mark wow. since they started with those scholarships, and they're decent scholarships. The least you can get is five thousand, and it goes up as high, high as fifteen thousand for us. A high school senior in Thurston County that will go to college in this state. Yeah. So it uh, make, makes it pretty That's good. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, where can folks get the book? Well, uh, they can call me or email me. Okay. All that's here. But the email is history at olytumfoundation.org. I'll put the links to on this Good, for good. Folks. And then, of course, we can have a phone call. Uh, I, I can do some, you know, autographing the books and sure. that kind of thing. And we're going to have some book signings off-site too. But generally, coming to the Schmidt House, and that gives you an excuse to come and come in and yeah. and, and look at this 1904 house. <laughs> this house is amazing. You've uh, given me an opportunity before to have a tour through here, and I'd uh -huh. love to do a, a video walk for folks to see this as well. But uh -huh. just the grounds and being able to look out over the lake. Yeah. That I guess at Perhaps when it was built, maybe not the lake, right? Yeah, well, it uh, didn't turn into a lake until the 1950s when yeah. they put a dam on it. It was a saltwater estuary right up the lower falls, so we were the southern tip of Puget Sound. It's amazing. You yeah. can just feel the history in this building. Uh -huh. uh, you can see the ornate decorations and the unique uh, hand craftsmanship that goes into yeah. these old buildings. And at the lower level, the basement level, we have the archives mm -hmm. and all the Olympia Brie uh, yeah. photographs and paperwork and, and a few art items of interest too, but it's, uh, we don't have enough space to do an artifact kind of museum. But. If we get, once we get past the COVID issues and things like that, are there more uh, thoughts and conversations on having these you know, I'm reminded of when you had the different types of the billboard advertising. Yes. People could come and see that the, was a very popular the history of the billboard ads that uh -huh. you have down in the yeah. basement. I mean, it's the hope valuable. is that's to come back, right? Yeah. We, oh, yes. Yeah, we, in fact, uh, that was, we were doing great guns as far as attracting tourism. That was uh -huh. part of our deal with Tumwater, too, was to be a kind of a semi-museum, but also just a draw for tourism and the low hotel motel tax fund and draw visitors. Yeah. And we kept adding to it the history talks that we hosted here and the house tours and the river walk tours down in the falls and and uh, just uh, videos like you're doing now. Uh, we did a lot of those that's on the City of Tumwater website or on YouTube. Sure. And so uh, all that all of a sudden stopped in uh, March of 2020 when COVID shut everything down, including Schmidt House and, 
And here I was used to tons of people coming through here, and all of a sudden nobody, nothing, you know, who's quiet. And so I said, what are we going to do? we got to keep our visibility and keep the history growing. And so I went back to my first love, of that's researching and writing about Tumwater history and go back to print media. So it's not only inspiration for the book, but also for uh, now it's digital print media through Facebook postings. Sure. So we have post on the Schmidt House Facebook page every Monday, a new one of these stories with a picture on it. And so we, I have enough of those now to make that second book we were talking about. That's great. That's, you know, you bring up a good point, even though the crowds have not come by, the work is still needed. And uh -huh. um, volunteering in the form of donations helps continue it the does. work until we can get back to that point where folks can come back. And by. as it starts to lift, we're going to be returning to maybe not the same form of the big history talks because we were packing out big yeah. crowds in here and we had to turn people away, but we can't do that anymore. Even in the future, I think it's just too many. Yeah. People won't want to be crammed together <laughs> anymore. But it was a great fun and uh, great, very popular. And so we hope to do that and, t and tours and other ideas, events, you know, and things like that to, to um, um, and in fact, uh, even international tourist organizations have come by from Australia and places sure. like that and say, man, this place could be one of the top draws of the, in the world yeah. because of the, the beauty of it and the history of it and the, the architecture and things like that. And, and if you could restore the old brewery like we're starting to do uh -huh. in Tumwater with yeah. the brew house. Where can people find information about all the, that effort? Well, the City of Tumwater's website is one, and then also the uh, Olympia Tumwater Foundation okay. uh, website is another that we'll have. And uh, we have a, a Brewery Park website now, or Facebook page. Oh, there's a website too. Anyway, we have, we're getting into modern technology, yeah. which kind of surpasses me. I'm of the age where you had to watch computer by candlelight, you know. It's, uh, well, you mentioned microfish, and I'm wondering how many folks remember. <laughs> yeah, what's that? <laughs> going through there at the library, I have uh, memories of that as well. <laughs> well, Don, I do appreciate the time that you've given a, a, me here this afternoon to talk with you about the book. Sure. And I would love to do more and, and visit Tumwater more with you. Good. It's yeah. just a great place. It was a great place for me to grow up in. Yeah. yeah. And uh, learned a lot. And it, it's the history is, I mean, it's palpable. You can feel yes, it as yes. you're driving around. Good, so. good. Well, Again, for me, it's a retirement job, and who, who would have thought I would have had my hobby turn into a paying job sure, in my retirement years? Sure. I was a radio guy like you. Yeah. I was in broadcasting for many years. That was my career. Again, the book is The Tumwater We Never Knew. It's by Don Trosper. And again, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.